Once upon a time, long before man learned to fly, long before locomotives left smoky streamers on the horizon, long before all this, somewhere farther than man could sail, there was a little valley. There on the banks of the winding stream nestled a peaceful little village and draped around this hamlet, stretching far and wide over hill and dale, was the great forest. Here, deep among old trees, wet moss and velvet shadows, life flows peacefully along. Or does it? Jonathan! Funny. Who's playing games? Look here, young woman. I might have cut you in half. No axe can harm me, Jonathan. Honest Jonathan. That is your name, isn't it? Honest be name, honest be nature. Now, young woman, kindly step aside. I've business with that tree. And so have I. I've come to ask you not to cut it down. Oh, fancy now, have you? And may I ask what you have to do with it? You see, I'm queen of this forest. Oh, and I'm the emperor of China. Very well, then. Let me put it in this way. You see, this tree is the oldest and the fairest of them all. It's a mighty big oak tree that'll keep the whole village warm right through the winter. But who's going to keep them warm all winter? The little creatures that live in its branches. See how frightened they are. Well, look here, it's all very well. Spare this tree, Jonathan, and he'll bless you. And so shall I. Of course, if you put it like that. All right. Oh, thank you, Jonathan. You shall not go unrewarded. I'll grant you three wishes. What? Anything I wish for? Three times? Of course. Ah! I ought to have more sense. First, I give away the finest tree, and then I start talking about three wishes. Fairy tales, all fairy tales. Where are you? Where have you gone? Jonathan? The wishes belong to both you and your wife. Don't be hasty. Yes, Your Majesty. Oh, I, I mean, no, Your Majesty. I, I, I beg Your Majesty's pardon, I'm sure. You may stand up now. Oh, thank you, Your Majesty. I'm afraid the tree got a little bit chipped. But don't worry, Your Majesty. It'll soon heal over. Real soon. Good evening, Jonathan. Good evening. You'll never believe what happened to me. Not now. Dinner's already. Hurry and get cleaned up. All right, Anna. You just listen to me for a minute. You know that big clump of oak trees along by the post road with the great big one in the middle? I was walking there today when suddenly I saw a vision. Yes, I know. You don't believe me, do you, Anna? Sit down and say grace. about 
treacherous you drew that grime in. Now then, Anna, let me tell you, I was chopping away at that big oak tree, the one I was telling you about, when all of a sudden there was the most wonderful smell of roses. Cabbage. Oh, it's cabbage. Can't we ever eat anything else? We can't afford anything else. You should thank the good Lord for what he provides. But just for once, I wish he'd provide a nice big juicy sausage. It's here. Where did it come from? I told you, it's what I've been trying to tell you all the time. She granted us three wishes. She? Who is she? Why, the vision, of course, the beautiful lady. What beautiful lady? Well, you never saw anything like it in your life. One minute she wasn't there, and the next minute there she was. Her skin was like mother of pearl. Her hair was like the gold of wild honey. And she was so young. Oh, shame on your old man talking like that. So lovely. She... That sausage will grow on your nose for saying such a thing. <laughs> a sausage! See what you've done. She's granted our second wish. Now two of our wishes are wasted. I know what to do. Oh. We'll simply cut it off. No, you don't. All right, then let it stay. It doesn't look so bad. Maybe you don't mind me walking around like this, but I do. And I wish this thing was off my nose this very instant. You ought to be ashamed throwing away our last wish like that. What difference does it make to a nose as big as yours anyway? Mine doesn't smell like garlic all the time. So, you're tired of sausage already. First you're tired of cabbage, now you're tired of sausage. But Anna, all I said was... You wished for it, didn't you? Once in a lifetime, poor people like us can ask for anything they want. And what do you wish for? A sausage. We had three perfectly good wishes. And what have we to show for them? Tell me what? Nothing. That is what we have when we could have had anything we wanted. Oh, when I think of it, I could cry. Cabbage wasn't good enough for you. Of all the things we need, you wish for a sausage. You and your silly wishes. I sometimes wonder why I ever... so foolish. Our dream could have come true. There's still hope, Anna. She might grant us another wish. Just a little one, maybe. It wouldn't matter to me how little he was. I'd love him with all my heart. Even if he were no bigger than my thumb. Someone's outside. Don't you hear? What? Someone's knocking. I 
can't hear a thing. Go back to sleep. That's right. The home of Jonathan the woodcutter? Yes, but I can't see you. Mm, are you Jonathan? Yes, I am, but where are you? Then I'm in the right place. I can hear you, but I can't see you. Well, lower your candle down here. Glory be. Come in, lad, come in. Thanks. I'm cold. Oh, that feels good, Father. Father? You called me Father? Of course. Don't you recognize your own son? Oh, I think I understand. Tell me, were you sent by the beautiful lady? That's right. Welcome, son. <laughs> Welcome. Thanks. I hurried too as fast as I could so I could get here on my birthday. Jonathan? Who is it? Just a minute, Anna. Who's that? That's your mother, son. Come on, let's surprise her. We have a visitor, Anna. A little visitor. He's going to stay with us as long as we live. Mother? I've always known what your name would be. Oh, I'm so happy. <laughs> I am too. But isn't a fellow supposed to have a cake on his birthday? For goodness sake, of course. You must be starving. Jonathan, build a fire up. I'll fix something right away. Mug for a table, spool for a chair, nice and stable, room to spare. Thimble for a cup, button for a plate, now we are ready to celebrate. Happy birthday, son. Happy birthday, son. Happy birthday, everyone! It's getting late, and I have to fix you something to wear. Come along. It's time for little boys to be in bed.
Which in China land mean good morning. Oh, uh, good, good morning, Mr. Uh... Allow unworthy one to introduce your humble servant, Confucian, and bidding you on behalf of all toys in Nusli a most glorious welcome. Oh, thank you. Good morning, oh. Tom. Good morning, Tom. Good morning. Good morning, Tom. Uh, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I didn't know toys could talk. All oh, very grateful to you, Tom, to bring us to life. Grown up can't do that. They are too smart. You see, Tom, many, many years, this has been a very lonely place without you. And now that you here, we are so happy. We want to celebrate. Can sing it long.
Well, we were having a party. Uh, honest, what we were singing and dancing and jumping and in the... Now, listen, son. Imagination's all right in a little boy, but don't let it go too far. Never forget your father's name is Honest Jonathan. Turn coming. Which way, father? Left today, son. Watch me take it. Look, no hands. Left, Sally. <laughs> Another turn coming, Father. Left again? Yes. Sally, left again. Son, this donkey seems to understand every word you say. Sure. I understand him, too. <laughs> what was that? A cry from the black swamp. What's a swamp? An evil place, son, where horrid birds and animals live. You must never go inside there. They gobble up a little lad like you in no time. Splinter, he couldn't lift a feather. Ah, but you forget the old adage. There are more ways than one to crack a vault. He can wiggle through the keyhole. No, no, I don't want nobody else. I can open it with my bare hands. Of course you can, of course you can. But he can do it quieter. Now watch me strike a bargain with the old man. We'll play a little game. The cars, of course, would be marked. <laughs> oh, I, uh, Our fortune is as good as me. Stand back, my good man. <laughs> Your gracious pardon, sir. Uh, my colleague and I are showmen of prominence on our way to the annual fair, and we were wondering what price you put upon the little lad. Price? What do you mean? Do you want to buy him? Oh, no, no, no. It would be more of a loan. A sort of loan lease. We would teach him a good trade, and we would pay you. He will be learning, and you will be earning. He's not for sale. He's my son. Oh, we understand. Don't we, Anthony? Oh, yes, we do. Who would argue with a father's heart? I like you. So do I. I like you very much. Goodbye, little lad. One day your father will be very proud of you. Out of it, that chair. the looks of those fellows. I thought they were kind of nice. you be? I've been calling for you. I've been looking for you all through the forest. Oh, poor Woody. Well, I, I just secured the position as second woodwind in the Royal Military Band. I think that's wonderful. Do you really? <sighs> well, 
Won't you sit down? Thank you. You know, Queenie, if only there weren't this barrier between us. You being an immortal and I a mere unworthy mortal. There needn't be a barrier, Woody. You mean I can be immortal too? The other way around. You can become immortal. Well, what's stopping you? What do you have to do? It isn't what I have to do. It's you. Me? Uh-huh. Well, tell me. Can't you guess? I have to be promoted to first woodwind in the Royal Military Band? No. Not bandmaster. It's much simpler than that. Woody? Yes? Would you promise me something? Anything in the world. Well, you, you won't ever, under any circumstances, ever try to kiss me, will you? Oh, no, certainly not. <laughs> Funny how a fella can change, you know. There was a time, there was a time when I wouldn't have thought twice about kissing a girl as pretty as you. <laughs> oh, I was a terrible fella. Were you, Woody? Oh, certainly was. Kissing, kissing, always kissing girls. Sometimes even when they weren't looking. <laughs> of course, uh, with you it's different, you know. Ever since I first met you, I, I've been a changed man. Do you know why? Because you were right up there. I was way down here. I still am. But I won't always be. One day, Queenie, I'll be worthy of you. And until then, I'll respect you. Thank you, Woody. That's nice. Good afternoon, Jonathan. Meet my son, Tom. Pleased to meet you, young man. Oh, goodbye now. What's the hurry, Woody? Why don't you come home and have supper with us? You know Anna's always happy to see you. Thanks, Jonathan. I wish I could, but I can't. I'm a very busy man now. I have to get back to the village. I, uh, I have a job. You? Working? Certainly. So long. I'll uh, see you at the fair on Sunday. Oh, I don't think you will. Anna and I, we're too old for things like that. Oh, Jonathan. Oh. How can you let this little fellow miss seeing the fair? Look, if you can't take him, let him go with me. What? I'll show him a good time. He'll be the guest of the second woodwind in the Royal Military Band. I made them especially for you to use And I can show you the smartest shoes That you ever saw at a fair 
don't step up, my friends, and see them shine. You never saw shoes that shine like mine, because I handle the talented line, exactly the kind you should wear. These shoes upon my shelf are the shoes I wear myself. These are talented shoes, talented shoes, talented shoes. They leap and jump and hop and skip, and every skip is full of zip. These are talented shoes, talented shoes, talented shoes. A man I think is wise to choose I'll have such a talented, talented shoes. I of seven league boots you may have heard They fly through the air like a hummingbird Well, I would never say a word If mine weren't better than those You must do of the dancing as bears Set out to fly They fly much faster and twice as high They're just the boots you ought to buy If you want to be on your toes These shoes upon my shelf are the shoes I wear myself. These are talented shoes, talented shoes, talented shoes. They leap and jump and hop and step, and every step is full of pep. These are talented shoes, talented shoes, talented shoes. A dance cannot confuse. Hey, Tom, what do you think of those dancing shoes? Huh? The dancing shoes. Oh, I think they're wonderful. I think so, too. Let's get some. But don't you have to stay here? Oh, we'll probably be back before it's my turn to play again. They'll never miss me for a few minutes. Hold on, Tom. Let's go. Sorry, Woody. All sold out. Not even a pair for a queen? Oh, very funny, Woody. <laughs> very funny. <laughs> well, how about a pair for this little fella? But, Tom, do you know I believe I have? See if these fit.
Where is he? Where is he? Where would he? I was crazy to give him a job in the first place. Those are talented shoes he's wearing. They'll keep on dancing as long as the music plays. It's no good, Ivan. It won't give at all. Now, finding ourselves in the situation in which you have placed us, it would seem that a little coordination is necessary. We'll use this piece of wood. This time, our efforts shall be unified. Now, both together, when I count three, you understand three? Yeah, it comes after two. Good boy. Right. One, two. Hey, Ash. this problem from a highly scientific angle. Sure, but... But first, we must practice unadulterated silence. Understand? Think nothing of it, young fellow. A fate decreed that I should be present in your hour of need. That is all. Ivan, <laughs> why don't we use him together? Ivan? Why don't you shut your... <laughs> young fellow, talking about hour of need, it would seem that you dropped in. <laughs> <laughs> dropped in just when my companion and I could use your assistance in the performance of a good deed. Oh, I'll be glad to help. I knew it. I knew it. The first time I laid eyes on him, see, is what I like about this charming young gentleman. He's so cooperative. Uh, what do I have to do? Come over here. Get the rope. Now, Thomas, my boy, listen to me. Let me explain. Now, 
all. The mayor of this village is an absolute rascal, right? Now, he has the money belonging to the poor orphans down there, and he intends to keep it all for himself. Now, if you will go down this rope and help us to get the money out, we will see that it is distributed amongst those to whom it rightfully belongs. Eh? Uh, I don't know. Maybe I should ask my father or Woody. Oh, no, no, no. No, there's no necessity to bother them. I'm sure they would approve. In fact, I'm quite certain your father would be very proud of you. Very proud. Oh, yes. He would? Yes, of course he would. So come on, let's pull the job. I, I mean, let us do our best to help the poor little orphans. Shall we? You see, Anthony, everything comes to him who waits. He believed every word of that silly story. <laughs> hey, wait a minute. How do I know that money's really for the poor little orphans? Uh, uh, well, you have my word of honor. And you have mine. Oh, oh, well, then it must be all right. one of those bags. Uh, which one? The biggest one. <laughs> and climb on and we'll pull you up. It's going to work, Tony. <laughs> Nobody will guess how we did it. <laughs> for a nice little ride. Ivan, they are gone. Come on. Now, Tom, this is where we must part. Now, that's the road that takes you home. Now, remember our little secret. Don't tell anyone. That's the only way we can surprise the dear little orphans. Oh, by the way, I'm sure the dear little orphans would like you to have this. Run and get it. Ha, 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 ha. 
Where have you been all day? Oh, all over the place. I had a wonderful time. I got some talented shoes, and then I went dancing, and I rode on a balloon. Oh, I've just been helping two friends of mine do a good deed. Until it got dark and you fell into the swamp. Eh, I'd have got out anyway, but thanks just the same. What was that? Hi, Queenie. Hello, Woody. <gasps> Do you realize I have searched every inch of this forest trying to find you? Well, I'm sorry you got lost. I got lost? You got lost, you mean? I've been looking for you all day. The trouble with you, Tom... Oh, Woody, why don't you leave him alone? Never mind, Queenie. The trouble with you, Tom, is you have no sense of responsibility. Responsibility? What about your sense of responsibility? You were to keep your job and take care of Tom. He only went away to get you a pair of shoes. You stay out of this. Don't speak to him like that. I think you'd better take him straight home. Oh, do this, do that. I've had enough. I'm tired of dragging through this forest doing things for other people. If it's not him flying around in balloons, it, it's you. Trying to get me to kiss you. Woody, how dare you? Ah, yes. Don't think I don't know. Not as dumb as I may look. Well, I will kiss you when I'm good and ready to marry you, and not before. If you think I'd marry a no-good, idle, do-nothing like you, you... Mm. you... second woodwind, you! Oh. Hey, wh wh what? Don't go, Queenie. I'm... I'm sorry, Woody. It was all my fault. Oh, it's, it's all right. Well, come on, Tom. Let's get you home. That good-for-nothing Woody. He'll have some tall explaining to do. Father's in a pretty bad mood. Yes. Hey, you better go ahead. I'll, I'll try to get to bed before Father sees me. You've had enough trouble of your own. Mm. Thanks, Tom. So long. Bye. <laughs> Disgraceful, it's disgraceful. A boy of his age being out at this time of night. It's been dark for hours. I should never have let them go. It's my fault. Where are they? Where are they? I'll teach him a lesson. I hope nothing's happened to him. Something will happen to him when he gets home. I dear a youngster like that gallivanting around. I'll see he doesn't do it again, I can tell you that. Finally decided to come home. Now you tell me what you've been doing all this time, and it better be good. Jonathan, you mustn't allow yourself to get upset like this. We'll talk about it in the morning. Say good night to your father. Good night, father. I'm sorry.
trouble. Yes? I just made my folks so unhappy, and I, I'm so sorry. Being sorry, next best thing to being good. Humble one suggests you go sleep. I can't sleep. I, I just feel so bad, I can't sleep. Problem easily remedied. Let me introduce Yanning Man, very good friend. And thrown in his eyes. If you yawn, 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 sleep, 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 if your eyelids burn, then you squirm and twist and turn. You try to yawn, 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 then you sleep, 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 till the dawn, dawn, dawn. So let's all yawn. <sighs> Come and sit down. You can't possibly go to work in weather like this. You might just as well relax and enjoy your breakfast. Where's Tom? He's asleep. Wake him up. Oh, no, let him sleep. He's so exhausted. I wonder who that is. Hey, gentlemen, what can I do for you? Uh, maybe you can help us. The treasure has been robbed and we're searching for the culprits. Have you seen any strangers hereabouts? No, I haven't. Have you, Anna? Why, no. Have you looked in the forest? Yes, we've been all through it. Well, we're about to have breakfast. Won't you join us? Come in, gentlemen. Make yourselves at home. Oh, thank you. Won't you sit down? Here you are. Thank you. You're welcome. Very tasty, ma'am. 
Well, thank you. Oh. Wake up, confusion. Hey. hey. This is a coin from the Yes, there's no doubt about it, I swear. How oh, now, madam? Are you in the habit of baking your bread in the village treasury? I hadn't the least idea how it could have got there. This coin is part of the stolen money. Where's the rest of it? Huh. A likely story. You mean you don't believe her? Are you accusing us of thievery? Yes. And you call yourself Honest Jonathan. You may call yourself Honest Jonathan, but as for me, you're a crook. That is it true! He's the thief. Don't you dare call my husband a thief! You're both under arrest. Wake up, huh? Wake up! Oh, no. Wake up! Wake up! Help! Confusion! Confusion! Wake up! Oh, honorable yawning man has very powerful medicine. We got to open the door. Confusion. With you. Some soldier just accused my money of stealing parents. No, I mean, well, we gotta open the door. He's not a crook. Are you awake? A chuck in the box. Yes, yes, yes. Come on. Yes, a big mistake. You haven't heard the last of this, my friend. Let me go. Take your hands off. Take your hands off. to say so in the first place. What can I do? Can you open the door? Consider it done. What am I going to do? To prove innocence, find guilty one. I know who the robbers are. With such knowledge, problem easily solved. Yes. So all I have to do is find the robbers and have them put in jail. That's what I'm going to do. You 
Hello, Tom. I was just uh, singing to myself a little. I heard. Oh, where are you going? Well, I have to go catch a couple of criminals. Really? And what have they done? Well, they robbed the treasury. And my folks got blamed for it, too, and they took them to prison. Oh, no. Well, that's terrible. Of course it's terrible. Well, are you going to come and help me or just sit there and sing? Oh, help, of course, Tom. Well, come on, then. I know what they look like, too. One of them has a big, tall hat, and the other's a big, fat man. Wait a minute. Are they dressed in black? Yes, yes, and... It's them. You know who they are, and I know where they are. Come on, Tom. <laughs> Take that money back where it belongs. <laughs> twelve for you, twelve for me. Give me that money, do you hear? Give me that money, do you hear? <laughs> oh, well. Fourteen for you, fourteen for me. I told him to go away. Yes, I heard you. Now we start again. Maybe we better leave and share the booty later. Hey, I want mine now. Very well. We must hurry. One for you. One for me. One for me and 
one for you, two for me, and uh, two for you, three for me, and the three for you, four. All right, you do the counting. Mm-hmm. One for you, and one for me. Two for you, two for me. Three for you, three for me. Shallow life, man. Bottoms up. There's a crook in here, and it's not me. There are two crooks in here, and they are both you. Two for you and... Oh. 
Two for me. <laughs> three. And three for me. One, two, three, four for you. And one, two, three, four for me. <laughs> one, two, three, four, five for you. <laughs> He's not there, Ivan.
<laughs> now, let's get the money, eh? <laughs> Pleasant dreams, Bernie Sarah. <laughs> well, I guess we got through with the little run. Yes, yes, sir. Well, come on, let's go. Oh, no, no, wait, there's still some more. Oh, leave those for the orphans. <laughs> come on. I am an orphan. I am an orphan. I am an orphan. <laughs> <laughs> Tom? Tom? Carrying out the sentence, I am going to give you one last chance. Where have you hidden the money? I can only repeat, sir, we know nothing about it. Tell the town lesher to prepare. <laughs> No 
two kisses, remember? Oh, don't worry, Mom. She does that all the time. Now, wait a minute. This isn't the way it was supposed to happen. Try it again. Gently. Like... like this? Yes. Queenie, you're real! Hey, Woody, is this how you do it? Tootie doody doo. Doo -dee -doo. 